Welcome to the worship services of Heartland Crossroads Cooperative Ministry, a United Methodist cooperative of six small membership town and country churches. I'm Pastor Bob Klingler. I'm joined by two associates, Pastor Gary Wade and Pastor Matt Rendulik. My daughter Emma also works with our music ministry. We're glad to have you with us this day. Just some connections to our ministries for you. On Monday evenings, we have a Bible study going on. We are studying prayer with Jim Cimbala. That's in a messenger room. You are certainly welcome to connect with us. Just let me know and I'll send you an invite. We'd be glad to have you Monday nights, 7 o'clock. On Tuesday evenings at 7 o'clock on Facebook, Pastor Matt does his musical Vesper service. And that's always a, a wonderful evening. So you're invited to do that Tuesday evenings, 7 o'clock on Facebook. We do have a uh, website. It is Heartland Crossroads Ministry. Dot org. That's all one word, heartlandcrossroadsministry.org. If you go there, you can find the words to the songs for this morning, and we have at least one that will probably be unique to you, so please go there and, and get those words so you can sing along with our songs. Just a reminder, on Election Day, which is the 18th, Franklin Center United Methodist Church is doing a sub-sale at the Franklin Township Fire Department. They're starting early in the morning, 7.30. They'll go until they run out. Last year they were done by noon, so you might want to get there early. They have ham, turkey, or Italian subs. They're $5. They're wonderful. So it's a chance to pick up some uh, subs. We're not doing pre-orders. It's going to be drive-in and pick-up only. Thank you for being with us today. Let's go and worship God. We begin our time of worship with a familiar tune, but the words are a little bit different. We do that as we celebrate Mother's Day. The song is called Our Loving God in Heaven. Psalm is Psalm 98. Oh, sing to the Lord a new song, for the Lord has done marvelous things. God's right hand and holy arm have gotten the victory. The Lord has declared victory and has revealed his vindication in the sight of the nations. <laughs> the Lord has redeemed his steadfast love and faithfulness to the house of Israel. All the ends of the earth have seen the victory of our God. Make joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. 
Break forth into joyous song and sing praises. Sing praises to the Lord with the lyre, with the lyre and the sound of melody. With trumpets and the sound of the horn, make a joyful noise before the ruler, the Lord. Let the sea roar and all that fills it, the world and those who dwell in it. Let the floods clap their hands, let the hills sing for joy together before the Lord, who comes to judge the earth. The Lord will judge the world with righteousness and the peoples with equi equity. Equity. I'm sorry. Equity. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> see you oh wow it's such a wonderful day you know what today is don't you it's a really really good day today <laughs> it's mother's day yeah yeah and so today we honor all those ladies all those ladies who are so important to us in the life of the church because well Mothers are special, but so are aunts and, and grandmothers and, and neighbors, teachers and, and nurses and doctors and, and lawyers and all the ladies who have learned all these things and they teach us. <laughs> That's so good. Yeah. So today we say thank you to mothers and all those special ladies who who teach us about God because so many Sunday school teachers are ladies the men need to step it up but men do too we are so thankful for those ladies who have shared their love with us and you know there are ladies who are are preachers too really good ones so all those ladies in the church Today we say thank you. And you can you can do that by making a phone call. You can, well, if you're at home, you can hug the person you're with. You can write a note or color a picture. Something that says thank you. We appreciate you. We love you. Okay, so celebrate. It's a very good day. And, and I'm glad to see you. I love you. Gotta go. Gotta go find those ladies. Bye! <laughs> we continue our worship celebration with Jesus' hands were kind hands. come to our time of prayer we have some concerns to lift up this week both uh, Chris and Terry Herendine are having health problems and they're ongoing so we continue to hold them in prayer we uh, pray for Bill Taylor who is in the ICU with COVID uh, and his mother Janice Taylor passed away from COVID so please keep that whole family in your prayers we want to t keep Tim in our prayers. He has uh, several health concerns going on. And likewise, Linda Alexander has several health concerns, so please keep them in your prayers. Adam Pieper had surgery and is recovering, so we continue to pray for him. 
The Aruda family has a number of health concerns. We keep them in our prayers, please. We also want to pray for the victim of a trailer fire. Those are certainly, you know, fires are very damaging and traumatizing to families. We want to keep them in our prayers and help them in any way that we certainly can through our good deeds as well. So we have quite a number of concerns this week. As we come to our joys, we are celebrating Mother's Day. And we are thankful for mothers. Huh? Yeah? Uh-huh. And godly women, grandmothers, aunts, all those who have taught us and, and helped us. We've had some good rain this week. Uh, we I had one day where I was able to mow the lawn, which is fantastic. And then uh, it rained the rest of the week. But that is also good because our wells will be grateful for that in August. Yeah, our, our amount of rain had been down this yeah, year. So significantly. The more so. we get, the, the better there. Also thankful for family time. And we, uh, we lift up all the birthdays and anniversaries that we are celebrating this week. Lots of people getting old. <laughs> With all these things, let's come before God in a time of silent prayer. <laughs> Loving and nurturing God, we thank you for mothers, for all they mean and have meant to us. We thank you for the love that they've shown and the care that they've given, for the many times they gave us hugs and held us close. Loving and nurturing God, we thank you for the qualities of mothers, for their patience, their kindness, concern and understanding in so many ways reflecting who you are. We thank you for the part they play in our lives and for this special day of saying thank you to them. Loving and nurturing God, we thank you for the wonder of your mothering. As a mother protects her children, you watch over us day by day. We thank you for your arms which always encircle and protect us. Your hands shield and deliver us from harm. Loving God, we pray for those for whom Mother's Day brings heartache rather than celebration. We pray for those who have never known their mother or whose mothers have died. We thank you for mothering your mothering heart and your tender love, which nurtures all who feel abandoned and lost. We wait with those who long to be mothers, but as yet have not had their own children. We grieve with those who ache because they'll never be mothers. We thank you for their mothering hearts, which long to be expressed. Lord, in your mercy, mother us all with your love. We pray for those who struggle with the way their children have chosen to live their lives and grieve with those who are orphaned or have a difficult relationship with their mother. We thank you that when we long for a mother's love, you do not abandon us. Lord, in your mercy, mother us all with your love. May all of us have the comfort of knowing that your mothering love is constant. Your understanding is perfect. And your compassion is never-ending. We thank you that you gave birth to all of us with delight and joy. Lord, in your mercy, mother us all with your love. Amen. Amen. Savior, I know for sure, all of my days are held in your hand, crafted into your perfect plan. You gently call me into your presence, guiding me by your Holy Spirit, teach me, dear Lord, to live all my life through your eyes. I'm captured by your holy calling. Set me apart. I know you're drawing me to yourself. Lead me, Lord, I pray.
gently call me into your presence, guiding me by your Holy Spirit. Teach me, dear Lord, to live all my life through your eyes. I'm captured by your holy calling. Set me apart. I know you're drawing me to yourself. Lead me, Lord, I pray. Take me, mold me, use me, fill me. I give my life to the potter's hand. continue in with the narrative lectionary. We skip around a bit. We're going into Paul's life uh, before we celebrate Pentecost together, and we're in the book of Galatians, chapter 1. Listen, because the Word of God is living and active. God still speaks through His Word if we listen, and I suspect you will hear directly from Him today in our reading as well. Paul writes, You know how I used to live as a Jew? I was cruel to God's church and even tried to destroy it. I was a much better Jew than anyone else my own age, and I obeyed every law that our ancestor had given us. But even before I was born, God had chosen me. He was kind and had decided to show me his son so that I would announce his message to the Gentiles. I didn't talk this over with anyone. I didn't say a word, and not even to the men in Jerusalem who were apostles before I was. Instead, I went at once to Arabia, and afterwards, I returned to Damascus. When Peter came to Antioch, I told him face to face that he was wrong. He used to eat with Gentile followers of the Lord until James sent some Jewish followers. Peter was afraid of the Jews and soon stopped eating with Gentiles. He and the other Jews hid their true feelings so well that even Barnabas was fooled. But when I saw that they were not really obeying the truth that is in the good news, I corrected Peter in front of everyone and said, Peter, you are a Jew, but you live like a Gentile. So how can you force Gentiles to live like Jews? We are Jews by birth and are not sinners like Gentiles. But we know that God accepts only those who have faith in Jesus Christ. No one can please God by simply obeying the law. So we put our faith in Christ Jesus. And God accepted us because of our faith. When we Jews started looking for a way to please God, we discovered that we are sinners too. Does this mean that Christ is the one who makes us sinners? No, it doesn't. But if I tear down something and then build it again, I prove that I was wrong at first. It was the law itself that killed me and freed me from its power so that I could live from God and live for God. I have been nailed to the cross with Christ. I have died, but Christ lives in me. And now I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me 
and gave his life for me. I don't turn my back on God's undeserved kindness. If we can be acceptable to God by obeying the law, it was useless for Christ to die. The word of the Lord for the people of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So Paul sums it up in that last sentence. And perhaps there's no greater sermon that can be spoken than just that sentence. If we could follow the rules and do right on our own and make the best decisions and go to heaven, then there would be no purpose at all for uh, the Christ to appear, the Messiah to appear, for liberation to appear. In fact, we would be much more powerful and holier than we would ever imagine ourselves to be. So Paul gives this treatise uh, here to remind us not to get too high on our horses because Christianity built a new culture just like Judaism did. You know, um, at first there was ground zero with the Gentile Christians. They didn't know what to do. And Peter snuck in and ate with them so that he would have fellowship with them. And that means he probably broke many of the kashrut dietary laws um, and, and many other um, things that were going on as well, cultural things as well as Torah laws uh, that were being presented. But he did such so that people would hear and experience Jesus. Paul called him out on that because, you know, Paul wanted him to still practice Judaism and also not be a hypocrite and because he was telling the other Christians to practice Judaism as well. Um, and then, so there's that inner battle at the beginning of Christianity. And this is where Christianity comes to like this null point of faith does everything. It's faith in Jesus and it's God's grace that is absolutely everything. There's no tradition that can save you. It's not the United Methodist Church that saves you. It's not your baptism certificate that you show upon going to heaven. It's not a countdown of how many times you've been to church, how many times you've taken communion, how many old ladies you've crossed, helped cross the street, how many um, you know dollars you've given, um, your Eagle Scout awards. It's none of those things. In fact, it's none of the other things either. It's not the drugs that you've done. It's not the tattoos that you have. It's not the abuse that you've been a part of in your relationships. It's none of those things are hindering you from heaven either. All it is, is the, as this translation um, uh, so simply puts it, I don't turn my back on God's undeserved kindness. And undeserved kindness is what we call grace. Grace. Yeah. Charismatos, a gift, something that's entirely undeserved, and might I say even radical in its giving. You see, in religious terms, we talk about mercy, we talk about, um, you know, uh, justice, mercy, uh, and grace uh, quite often. And justice, um, in some senses, is getting what is coming to you. You reap what you sow kind of thing. Um, it's not the prophetic kind of justice, but that's the kind of justice that we speak about frequently culturally. <laughs> and uh, mercy is being forgiven. <clears throat> and grace goes beyond that. I once was uh, told a story that kind of illustrates this as, if you're going um, uh, 90 in a school zone and the police pulls you over, Justice is giving you that ticket because you broke the law and you deserve what's coming to you. Yeah, mercy would be him tearing up that ticket and grace would be him tearing up that ticket and taking you out for breakfast and mm. explaining why you shouldn't go 90 in a school zone and helping you so that you don't make that mistake over and over again and don't cause any future harm. So here we are as a church. And sometimes we're just so bogged down with things. We have to be meeting in our places of worship. We have to have our fellowship. We have to have our chicken meals the way we cook them the right way. We have to have these hymns. We have to sing these new choruses. We have to listen to these preachers and have these Bible studies. And Paul just does a simple reminder here. Maybe we need to look back at the undeserved kindness that Jesus gave us. And that is our ticket to God. Galatians is one of those books that causes a lot of uh, a lot of discussion over the years, a lot of controversy. 
because Paul uses the term, and this translation doesn't have it there, but he uses the term justification mm -hmm. over and over again. It talks about being justified and justification by faith through grace. Like you know, a legal it, term. Yeah, it's, a, it's one of those legal terms. A uh, dean of a seminary, Lutheran seminary down in South Carolina, suggested that we might understand it better if we took out justified and put in belonging instead. Mm. I'm talking about belong and belonging. And if you look through that passage and you, you put that in there, it does change some of the understanding of what's going on here. Everybody wants to belong to something. I mean, what groups do you belong to? Do you belong to a, a club? Do you belong to an organization? Uh, everyone has things that they belong to. We belong to our churches and we value the belonging there. We have these things that, that we belong to, and we kind of set up boundaries in our belonging. Uh, a friend of mine was a member of a very large church, and they had a Sunday school class. It was the TNF class, 30s and 40s. So you had to be in your 30s or 40s. If you weren't yet 30, you didn't get in. And if you were 50 and older, you, you weren't allowed in. It was the 30s and 40s. And they took a room in the church. And they got an area rug and they put in there and they got some chairs that were different than the other chairs in the church. And they decorated the room differently. And it was the T and F room. It was their place, their spot. And you knew what it took to belong there was by age and you could be part of that group. So there were the boundaries drawn around the belonging. What we have here is Peter and the group who were raised as Jews whose sense of belonging in God's kingdom is caught up in being a Jew. And the, the, the framework around that, the boundaries, if you will, were the law and the different things that set you apart from other people as a Jew. But the early church now has this mix going on. And we, we encountered that last week where you've got Jews and Gentiles in there together. And as much as they had decided that everyone could be part and that you didn't have to, the Gentiles didn't have to become Jews. There were times when Peter got nervous and so he would go over and, and he would be away from the Gentiles and stay just with the Jews so he didn't offend anybody. And Paul calls him on it. He says, you're being a hypocrite. So when you're with the Gentiles, you act like them. But when you're with the Jews, you, you act like them and you ignore the Gentiles. And we got to get beyond all that because our belonging isn't in our Jewishness. It's not in our heritage as Jews. It's not in the law. That's not our belonging. And Paul talks about his credentials. He was the quintessential Jew. He was way up there. He had studied hard. He was a Pharisee, the son of a Pharisee. He was well learned. He was basically, if you would, a lawyer in terms of the law. He knew the law in and out. He was as Jewish as you get. But God transformed him. And he said, basically, he died in Jesus and rose again. And the law wasn't his identity anymore. It was Jesus. And it was, there are two different translations, faith in Jesus, or it could be translated as the faith of Jesus. When you talk about the faith of Jesus, it was that faith that was obedient to God, even to death, whose love was so deep, he was willing to die for the, the, the people that God had given to him. And so Paul is saying it's, it's that. It's love and self-giving that become the boundaries, the identifier. That's how you tell a Christian. They have faith in Jesus and live out that faith by living out Jesus' love and self-giving. That becomes now the identifier. That's how you pick out. They'll know we're Christians by our love. As we celebrate Mother's Day, uh, mothers have been, long been that symbol of love and self-giving and self-sacrifice for their children. And Paul's saying, you know, that's, that's what sets us apart. And it's through grace that we are made part of the family, that we are uh, grafted into the family. Both Gentiles and Jews, everybody gets to be part of the family because of that faith that Jesus had that led him to the cross, because we have faith in him. As we live out that faith from day to day, God's grace covers us and we are part of the family. We have a place to belong. 
We are no longer outsiders, but we all belong. The early church wrestled with that. They had a hard time figuring out who was in and who wasn't in. Sometimes we still have that problem in the church today, deciding who was in and who wasn't in. But when we think of, of love as being unconditional and perfect, we know that all we have to do is put our faith in that faith of Jesus and live out lives of love and self-giving. And we're in. You don't have to be 30 or 40. <laughs> we're in. We are part of the family. And we celebrate that as we celebrate love this day. We conclude our time of worship this day with Gift of Love. Brothers and sisters, this is a wonderful day, not only to come and worship God, but we come together to honor our mothers, those who God chose us to be born from here into this world. They love us, they take care of us, they nurture us, just as God does the rest of the time in our lives as well. But take time out to go, call your mother, see your mother, or even remember her, your mother, if she's passed with all the good things that she taught you in life. And just thank them once again for everything they've done. And praise the Lord for the mother that God gave you. Because whether you think she was good or bad, God gave you her for a purpose. Be blessed in all that you do this week. Amen.